What you're about to hear is audio from a New Jersey judiciary hearing about gun control bill A4769 that took place on Monday. Assemblyman McKeon. I'm passionate about this issue too because I, in my opinion, maybe tone deaf isn't the right uh, word as opposed to just maybe a little bit disingenuous. Do you really, do either of you, does anybody really want to put more guns in the hands of people that live in Patterson and Newark and Elizabeth and Camden to say here, oh, the money you're charging isn't fair? That'll make things safer? Please. The point being is that how can anybody think putting guns in the hands of people in the city to make it easier uh, to, to want to provide a supplement like we would for food so they can have a concealed and carry weapon w would be really something that you mean. I can't believe that to be the case. And if it is, so be it. What you just heard was New Jersey Assemblyman John F. McKeon essentially saying, I don't want poor black people to have the right to carry guns in New Jersey. Don't believe me? Okay, I'll show you. He named four cities. Patterson, New Jersey is 25.71% black with a poverty rate of 25.15%. Newark, New Jersey is 49.54% black with a poverty rate of 25.16%. Elizabeth, New Jersey is 20.04% black with a poverty rate of 15.17%. And Candom, New Jersey is 42.48% black with a poverty rate of 33.60%. Anyone want to take a guess what percentage of John F. McKean's district is black? 12.9% with 61.7% being white and has a poverty rate of 4.5%. It doesn't get any more blatant than that. You see, in New Jersey, in order to get a concealed carry permit, you had to prove that you had a justifiable need, which is code for, unless you're a wealthy elite or connected, you're not getting a license to carry in New Jersey. However, this year, the United States Supreme Court held that New York's concealed carry law that also had their own version of a justifiable need standard, AKA, you're not getting a license unless you're part of the elite, held that this type of standard was unconstitutional. This also means now New Jersey's law is also unconstitutional. So now New Jersey is scrambling to create a new concealed carry law license process that instead of making it impossible to get a license, you can technically get a license on paper if you can pay the high fees. And though you may have a license, you can't carry it anywhere because the law damn near makes all of New Jersey a gun-free zone. During this hearing, you had people arguing that this bill makes it too expensive for poor people to get a license because the bill increases the fee to obtain an FPIC from $5 to $50 and the fee for the PPH from $2 to $25. And then on top of that, the application fee for the permit to carry a handgun would be $200. Then on top of that, you would have to obtain liability insurance. Now ask yourself this question. Who does this gun control law make it harder on to get a concealed carry license? People living in John F. McKeon's district that has a medium household income of $138,450 and is 61% white? Or the four cities he named with the high black population and high poverty rate? What John F. McKeon said was flat out racist, but that's no surprise because gun control since its inception has been racist. Gun control has absolutely nothing to do ideologically with the control of firearms. If you do even a most cursory uh, look at history between guns and gun ownership, you will find that without question, gun laws were created to restrict gun ownership from certain classes of people. Long before the revolution, long before the drafting of the Second Amendment, laws were passed uh, in the uh, various colonies uh, in what is now the United States to take away guns from minorities. The first gun control laws in America start in 1620 in Virginia when the legislature enacts a law saying don't let black people have guns. And that's been sort of the key theme of American gun control for, for centuries ever after. In the famous Dred Scott opinion, Justice Tawney makes it clear that one of the reasons blacks should not be treated as equal citizens is that if they are, they will enjoy the right to keep and bear arms wheresoever they go. 
It wasn't that they said the Second Amendment doesn't apply to these people. It was they're not considered people because if they're considered people, they would have the right to own firearms. John McCain has an estimated net worth of over a million dollars and he is in government. Of course, he's not worried about how hard and expensive it is to get a license to carry because he has the money, time and status to get one. And that's assuming there isn't an exception carved out for him for being a political figure. The crazy thing is his statement proves that this bill is unconstitutional and that it was designed to discriminate against people of a lower economic status to get a concealed carry license. He essentially alluded to it himself. If this bill is not passed, this would mean there would be more people, i.e. poor black people in Patterson, Newark, Elizabeth, and Camden, New Jersey, carrying guns. So we need to pass this bill to prevent those people from being able to afford the license. But his initial statements don't only prove this bill is unconstitutional, this next statement from him proves he doesn't care that it's unconstitutional. And we're trying to exercise our wisdom within the ambit of the Constitution and the decision that's before us in coming up with reasonable regulation. I can't guarantee that it will be constitutional at all. Man, we've got to vote what we feel. And if nothing else, you got to respect that because that's how I feel. What's even crazier is that he said this in response to the person who spoke before him and said this about a woman who was shot in Patterson, New Jersey, delivering food. Petra Roden, the woman who was murdered in Patterson, New Jersey, while being a DoorDash driver, that woman was just trying to feed her family. And you're telling me, you're telling the state of New Jersey that no, we really don't think she's one responsible enough to be able to do that by following all the laws that are laid out for her to use. And two, uh, that she's just a competent person. Why? Well, maybe because she lives in Patterson. Or maybe uh, we just don't like the way she looks. Maybe it's she's a woman. All these things that we are supposed to be blind to, who knows why somebody would say she's not qualified or she shouldn't have it. I say she should have it. I say if someone feels the need to protect themselves for a given reason, whether it's domestic violence, you're in a tough neighborhood, whatever the reason is. Hmm. I wonder why John McKeon wouldn't want Petra Roden to be able to carry a gun for protection. First, a family's demand for justice after a delivery worker was shot and killed in New Jersey. 43-year-old Petra Roden was delivering food for DoorDash when she was shot in Patterson. Police tonight are still searching for her killer. Our New Jersey reporter Anthony Johnson just talking to her daughter. Petra Roden lived in an area where she needed protection because she couldn't rely on the New Jersey government to protect her. But John McKeon doesn't give two shits because I assure you, John McKeon doesn't live in a poor neighborhood. He's an elite. But these are the same people trying to tell you that you should not be able to own a gun, much less carry one. Why would you let someone like this dictate how you protect yourself? Yet we keep voting for these people and then wonder why we can't defend ourselves while the likes of John McKeon are running around with bodyguards or living in gated communities. Honestly, I believe the real reason John McCain is so gun ho about passing this bill is mainly because of this. More and more black people are buying guns nationwide, in fact. A recent gun industry survey shows that gun purchases by black people were up by more than 58%. Like I said before, from its inception, gun control is racist. It's not about saving lives. It's about controlling them. You know, we talk a lot about empowerment in this country, except for when it comes to the Second Amendment. However, I can't think of anything more empowering than having the most effective tool to protect you and your family. So help me spread this message by liking and sharing this video with everyone you know. And don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment because the Second Amendment, when it said militia, it wasn't talking about the government. It was talking about you. Also, if you want to know where to find the I'm the Militia shirt and merchandise, Click the I'm the Militia link in the description section of this video. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And most importantly, make sure you hit that bell symbol.